Alright, so today's class is about Schieber et al. And Sanjay, I will talk about it. Uh, so, today's class is about schema and um, a week ago we shared uh, some pointers to very good couple of videos about schema. Did all of you go through it? Go through the videos? Did all of you, uh, you know, look at what schema of the website and look at the examples uh, that are there? So if you did that, did just that, then uh, Today's activity will be, you know, very easy for you guys. Uh, and uh, before starting the activity, I will also share uh, some of my thoughts about Schema. Uh, so, can someone, uh, you know, briefly explain me why we need Schema? Like, what, what's the purpose of having a resource like Schema? To improve the ranking of your website. Yeah, that could be one. Yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, search engine supports schema or annotations. So, if you annotate your web pages using schema, there are uh, several ways uh, for your visitors to, you know, come to your. I mean, it opens up uh, different avenues for your visitors to reach your website. So, it, it certainly does. So, yeah. so uh, to interpret the text in a more knowledgeable way. Uh, more knowledgeable way. Yeah, you can. Uh, Use ex existing vocabularies, so yeah, you can you, you can develop uh, you know applications on top of uh, uh, schema or vocabularies, so which 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 exploit that knowledge. So yeah, so if you ask me uh, why we need uh, annotations, uh, my answer would be a little different, but uh, along the same lines. Uh, so we. Uh, these type of annotation uh, frameworks or vocabularies allow us to develop web pages uh, in a machine readable way. So, for an example, uh, if you look at the slide, uh, so to, you, to your left hand side, uh, you see how, yeah, you see how, uh, yeah, to your right hand side, you see how. A human would interpret this web page, uh, and your left hand side you would see how a machine, a web browser, would interpret the same page. So, for an example, uh, for a for a web browser, uh, the text schema of, uh, sorry schema blog uh, would be just a heading of type H two, right? Uh, but when we see that, uh, we know schema of uh, uh, you know, it's a website uh, and it has uh, an organization behind it uh, uh, that maintains that website. So, these are the things that we perceive by looking at this uh, title. Uh, the we same way. We use our, our background knowledge uh, automatically. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. We use our background oh, knowledge yes, yes. automatically. Uh, that, that's what we want to do with uh, by, by using these vocabularies. I mean, uh, the, the same way that we interpret it. Uh, now, uh, these vocabularies allows us to annotate pages so that uh, we can uh, actually give that knowledge uh, or embed that knowledge in web pages in a machine readable way so that uh, uh, the softwares like web browsers that uh, you know renders those web pages can actually process the web pages as we do. So that's the According to me, that's the most important uh, point of having such vocabularies. So, the idea behind schema. Um, yeah. So, if you if you uh, if you look at the video, you would uh, you might have heard about uh, microdata, microformats, RDFA. Those are different technologies that you can use to annotate web pages. Uh, in fact. Uh, I will share this slideshow with you. I, I don't want to go through all this, but uh, if you just focus on the uh, example given there, that's the same example. Now I have uh, here I have annotated that using RDFA. Uh, the same example using microdata, same example using microformats. So 
if you look at schema of website uh, and if you browse through the example, you will you will see the same thing. Uh, you can use different technologies uh, or techniques to annotate a web page using the same vocabulary. Uh, Dr. Shet uh, mentioned SRS, uh, you know, a few minutes ago, and this is how you would uh, annotate a web page uh, using SRS. This is the same web page. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's why we need the uh, schema, and uh, if you if you you know watch the whole video uh, towards the last part of the video, uh, Charles who was uh, giving that talk, he talked about uh, the challenges of uh, using such vocabularies. I also noticed uh, Hussein had raised that the, the same question, uh, like uh, since uh, schema is still evolving. Uh, you know, uh, the, the vocabularies that are used there, they keep, vocabularies keeps on changing. So, uh, did, did you uh, follow up uh, Charles' answer? So, the same exact question was raised, uh, was asked uh, during his talk, and uh, his answer was, uh, you know, we have to <laughs> live with that. I mean, that's how uh, when the systems evolve. Uh, so, uh, Schema was started in 2011 uh, when uh, Google, Yandex, Yahoo and Bing uh, came together and they decided to have uh, such resource uh, to describe things that they see on uh, web. Uh, the resource that can annotate and identify uh, the things that, they, uh, that you see on web pages in a machine readable way. Uh, so that's why uh, uh, schema.org was built uh, and um, yeah still it is evolving so uh, I just noticed that some of the uh, elements that I had used in my uh, home page are not supported by Google Read Snippet tool uh, and uh, I remember one such uh, element uh, which is the author element. So with author element, you can, uh, so when schema started uh, using the author element, you could link your web page to your Google profile. So when someone searches your name on Google, uh, Google used to uh, get the image you have on your Google, Google profile, Google Plus page, and uh, show it before, uh, you know, uh, below your uh, search results. So for an example, if you, uh, if you have your home page and if you have linked that to uh, your Google Plus page, um, if someone uh, searches your name on Google, Google would give you uh, your web page in the search results list. And um, below this, uh, below below the web page, it would also uh, show a small image of you, which is cool. So it was originally meant for authors, authors of books, authors of magazines. Uh, but uh, since it was out there, I mean, anyone could use it, so I used it myself. But then uh, Google suddenly stopped uh, showing it. Which on, one? Uh, author tag. Oh. So uh, the, the, the small image that uh, it used to show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I read somewhere that uh, they have uh, reduced it uh, to 15% of the use. So for an example, uh, a lot of people had used it, but now they are only showing 15 percent of uh, that, that. Okay, so uh, yeah, percent they don't show. Yeah, 85 percent of the time they don't show because uh, they are not uh, authors that they that they were expecting, like book authors or magazine authors. They are just straight to the people like uh, like us. So yeah, so that's an example for you know certain things that would. Uh, come up when you use uh, an evolving technology. So certain things you would see on the search engine one day, but after a couple of days you would not see them. So and Charles also discussed some uh, very important points uh, towards the end of his lecture, end of his talk. Uh, so for an example, uh, in microda microdata. Uh, it is not a standard, but RDFA is a standard. 
So his suggestion, even though he was uh, giving a talk on microdata, towards the end of his talk, he he he, he mentioned that uh, he he encouraged people to use RDFA uh, when annotating the pages. So that is. Uh, a, a, a very good uh, point that he made there. So whenever you uh, use such vocabulary, such techniques, if you see such techniques can be uh, used with standards, choose standards over uh, the non-standards. So that's one thing I wanted to share with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, those are the uh, main points that I wanted to uh, you know, share with you regarding the videos that we posted and you guys uh, went through the video so uh, we like, I prepared this very small uh, exercise uh, which is about annotating a web page using schema.org vocabulary so the main idea uh, behind this is that uh, we want you to learn how to use schema uh, and we hope like majority of the students here I'll just explain. Rather than moving it to you, mm -hmm. let them put it on their uh, uh, assignment uh, uh, page, and uh, you will uh, and, and uh, you will send you link to one single page, uh, okay. and yours is assignment four, right? This okay. is the fourth assignment, right? Third. 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 So, yeah, so most of the students who are taking this course are grad students and, uh, you know, you all have uh, a, a web space on uh, Bright State web servers or else in uh, Noises web server. So, at some point, uh, you would create your own pages. Uh, by the time you graduate, when you are searching for jobs, you would create your pages. So. Uh, use these techniques on your web pages so that uh, more people can reach you. So that's the whole idea. Um, so the first first question is about annotating a web page, uh, a person's page. So you can go to Schema. Uh, you can find out uh, what are the uh, vocabularies or what are the class types that you can use to annotate this uh, web page. You can download uh, the HTML page from here. Uh, then you can uh, annotate. Right? Then in the next question, I want you to think about uh, what are the new things that a search engine would know uh, just because you annotated the web page. So the things that were not there already, I mean not there before, but now uh, after uh, you annotate those pages, search engine could see those. So I want you to list down, uh, you know, uh, such things in second question. And for the third question, I want you to think how would a search engine arrive at an answer when you type a query? So this is still a hypothetical question. I mean, I don't know whether. I mean, I don't know how uh, Google uses schema.org vocabularies. I mean, I don't know whether this is possible on Google. But still, uh, I want you to think, uh, you know, if you are given the metadata, how would you arrive at an answer? So that's what I want you to write there. For an example, uh, if I type, let's say you are a search engine, and if I type the question, uh, what is John Doe's alma mater? So, how would you arrive at that answer? Utilizing schema of all vocabulary. So that's what I want you to write there. And if you go to schema of uh, web page and if you select a particular class type, if you scroll down, you would see examples. These examples are you know, self-explanatory. So uh, you can very easily see how the uh, annotation is done. Uh, so for an example, so this is how you would annotate a web page about a person. So this is the web page, and this is the same page annotated using uh, schema vocabularies using microdata format. 
So these are the tags that you would use. Item scope uh, defines the scope of the item or scope of the type that you are going to use for uh, to annotate that particular page. So here in this case, the type is uh, the person type from schema of vocabulary. So that is defined using item type property. And this scope is visible until this particular div is closed. That is here. Right? So all properties that are in schema of person class, you can use those properties to annotate the web page content within these two div tags. So that's the meaning of item scope. Item prop, so this is how you would annotate or how would you how you would use a particular property from persons class. You would use item prop. Right? So this is the property name. So likewise you can uh, annotate the page. Uh, and once you complete your uh, in class activity, go to this tool from Google, right, which is called the Rich Snipper Testing Tool, right, and paste your okay, let me show you. and paste your HTML code, and you can validate whether. Your annotations are correct. So, for an example, I just copy pasted that example from Schema, and it will show you the annotations you have. Right? So, you have name annotated, an image annotated, a job title, phone number, email. Right? Likewise, you can see. So, use this tool to uh, validate your annotations. So, when I'm grading, I will be use this tool. I will be using this tool. So, yeah, use this tool. So. You will not run into any problems. So you have any questions for me? So we don't care about the like the exact same formatting of the HTML. Like this is a break line. This is a no. Well, that's why I gave you the HTML page. So you don't need to worry about the HTML syntax. Uh, but make sure uh, the annotations are correct. So that's what I'm interested. <coughs> Is it this activity? The tool, I don't know whether the tool complains uh, about the HTML syntax errors. Uh, and we can check that. We're we using RDF page for Anthony. Uh, yeah, I, I, I encourage you to uh, use RDFA, but you might see some problems with it. I mean, these are. If I, if I, so I copy pasted the RDFA example from here mm -hmm. and now if I validate this right, it shows me all the properties but for email it says unspecified type this was not there in the previous version of the tool so the new version of the tool does not support uh, this annotation Right here, right. Uh, but if, uh, I I prefer you to use RDFA because it is a standard. Uh, I'm okay with you using Microdata RDFA, JSON LD, anything you want. That's that's fine. Uh, I, I but I prefer if you use RDFA. Doesn't matter if this shows unspecified type there because uh, if it shows me unspecified type, I would go into your code and see whether you have done it correctly. But uh, make sure you do it correctly if you use RDFA. But if you use Microdata, uh, um, this tool works pretty fine. I mean, so, is it because they might have uh, changed the world into something else to define that particular thing? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think it is uh, an issue with the the, how they you know, transform RDFA into okay. this output. Okay, okay. And the reason I do not encourage using microdata is that uh, 
in microdata, you cannot um, use multiple vocabularies. So for an example, if you want to use scheme of, you have to use scheme of or vocabulary only. Uh, I mean, you, you still can use other vocabularies, but uh, uh, in general, people do not encourage that. Uh, but with RDFA, it is not the case. So if you want, you can use uh, any vocabulary. So for an example, uh, I can change this to DVPDF. And uh, this is not person, this, is, this should be agent. And still it would, yeah, it would show me the properties, but uh, I think it should be on the logic property. Yeah. So yeah, I could still show me the properties, but uh, this does not support DBpedia. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, the property properties are not correctly extracted. I mean, it shows the uh, property name with the whole namespace here. But it, it identifies scheme of uh, properties, so that's why it correctly shows the uh, property names of uh, property names that are coming from person type. Now you can start the exercise. <coughs> oh, uh, what? One one more uh, one more point before I forget. Uh, so why I do not encourage JSON LD uh, is that uh, if you look at JSON LD, right? So JSON LD annotations it goes under the script tag, right? We are not sure that. Uh, uh, well, actually, uh, the script tags are. I mean. If you look at RDFA or microdata, the annotations goes in line with the page content. But here, the annotations are in somewhere else, I mean at the top of the page, but not along with the page content. So, especially Google, Google does not like uh, that. For an example, uh, when we had meta tags, uh, so me, uh, with, with meta tags, you could uh, meta tags were used to uh, give additional information about the things uh, described in the page. Right? Uh, but what people did was people start uh, misuse uh, meta tags. Mm -hmm. So they would, uh, you know, throw a lot of uh, search terms into meta tags so that uh, their page would come up uh, in Google search result and Google I didn't I mean, notice that so they are not using meta tags now mm. so they are not relying on meta tags to get uh, additional information about the page uh, so that's why they are using RDF uh, they are, for the same purpose they are they use RDF microdata so J JSON LD uh, is similar to meta tags in that way. I mean, because uh, uh, the annotation does not go along with uh, the page content. Annotations are uh, in a separate place in the same page, but at a different place. So yeah, that's why I do not, uh, you know, encourage you to use JSON LD. Otherwise, uh, for data ex exchange purposes, JSON LD is really good. So even the Google Knowledge Graph works on this annotations, right? Uh, Google Knowledge Graph is mainly built on uh, Freebase and the knowledge it extracts from Freebase and other sources. Uh, the Google Knowledge Graph will have the appropriate knowledge or entities, for example, that the, that you can incur, uh, you know, on this. Uh, so suppose, uh, so what would um, 
suppose, suppose uh, you use Ob uh, Obama uh, in a, as a tag here, as a person. Uh, Google's engine will use Google Knowledge Graph to, uh, uh, you know, connect, link, uh, you know, what somebody has tagged um, this as Obama with, uh, you know, Barack Obama, the President of the United States, uh, after disambiguation. There will be multiple Obamas out there, right? Particularly, there, I'm sure there are multiple Johnsons out there and all that. So, uh, and then from there on, by the way, you can get a role of the person, let's say, President of USA. Uh, but, uh, and then the same tag, Obama, will be linked with uh, its uh, corresponding of knowledge graph in Bing. They also have, you know, uh, sort of facts out there, all the persons, names, you know, locations, entities, that kind of thing. So all these facts are annotated uh, using some annotations like schema.org and This all. is done by human, right? Uh, yes. And, and, and notice, by the way, all of you guys should uh, pay attention. What is an analogy of this approach, schema.org, uh, compared to, uh, let's say, page rank? There is a certain level of, uh, high level conceptual uh, relationship. What is it? Uh, in page rank, uh, the user uh, that uh, create the website link to other uh, websites. So it is user generated. Here also we uh, annotate uh, our website by uh, ourselves. Yes, fantastic. This, this is again in user generated information. Search engine. The um, uh, do you remember uh, that the Tali Wokitsi Magics uh, that page? I said and we annotated uh, Dow Jones News, uh, it, you know, index, right, or uh, S&P Fine Index or name of the company. We did that automatically, right? Uh, that is so hard, right? To build that correctly is not easy at all. So, won't it be nice if the user of the content himself or herself gives this, right? Let let the content developer give that information, right? So, and, and you tap into community generated uh, supplied metadata or knowledge. You you tap into user generated uh, supplied uh, thing, in this case, content developer. And of course, content developer has interest to give good uh, metadata if it will help uh, better search engine ranking. Right? Have you all heard the terms SEO? Search engine optimization. Yeah, search engine optimization is a big deal, mm -hmm. right? The consultants, companies, they all help websites um, do what is necessary so that they show up in the search results. They don't search results, right? Now there's something called in it semantic search engine optimization. Right, right. <laughs> it's a book. It's called. Yeah, right. And 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 my pattern it has. Interactive, uh, was it advertisement or marketing? Something was there in the title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we also, we, we that. but the point here is that rather than um, do it uh, yourself, uh, sorry, do it by machine, if the humans are providing a tag uh, and the humans are already incentivized to do a good job, then there's nothing better than that. The other thing is all the tagging can be harvested itself for disambiguation and building stronger knowledge graph mm -hmm. if it's done right. You know, obviously yeah. Google is not fully, you know, reveal exactly how they do it, but I can think of doing that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, many people, I you know, I mean, I can easily apply some plus chain technique mm -hmm. and, and, you know, say, yes, there's this tag always. You already, schema already, already tells you it's a person. And then there's all the other things happen. Now I know it's the same guy. And then I collect, oh, this is a new, uh, so, suppose a, a new person gets well known in the world. Okay. Uh, I, I'll give an example. So suppose um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the prince and, uh, you know, princess of, uh, uh, in the, uh, you know, yeah, princess, uh, Prince Harry has a new son or daughter, whatever, right? As, and they give whatever name that is. Now, somebody suddenly a new person has come on the earth, uh, and with all the people tagging this guy, such as you can easily figure out that there's something new, a new person of relevance. And I can then 
say okay now it's a time to add that to my knowledge graph with variety of properties already in fact 10 people saying the property son of prince harry <laughs> it's done for me i can add the property in my knowledge graph yeah. and link him to sir, you know prince harry with the property type uh, property property of uh, son actually that's something it's already happening not in google, google because it, the semantic party is not it's common because no it may be happening i don't know, uh, I don't know. facebook is already doing that <laughs> facebook itself is a uh, is a semantic inside and they automatically uh, crawl wikipedia to build the entities they know people look for for example if you look uh, i was uh, i was looking for a place in when i was in uh, in in dayton downtown and they had the text system wikipedia as a page and there was a invitation this page is automatically generated mm -hmm. you can even like it so it's a page inside facebook that facebook automatically generate crawling what people was were, are, look, uh, are looking for inside this website and going out and bringing information inside. Yeah, if they generate that page automatically, then that sounds really interesting. That's very, uh, actually, with something like schema.org, the world can be the same. Mm. And that's what, what, like, if they recognize that people are well, looking I, for I think something. They are, they are doing that. So in the Google Vault, which is the next, you know, thing to, in fact, if you go in our, uh, you know, web pages of this class, you'll see uh, uh, links to previous articles on, there is an interview with Amit Singhal, the guy in charge of Google search, right? Um, uh, by the way, that guy Amit Singhal is the one who I think in first developed the news dot google dot com. Okay? Anyway, so he's uh, you know vice president or whatever uh, of of uh, this Google search, and uh, he talks about uh, I think it is from string to thing, which I have talked about a long time ago, and many others probably did also uh, from keywords. To entities, to relationships, and then something else. Okay, so uh, to events and other things. So this is the progression that we've been talking, thinking about. And uh, since the 2002 keynote that I gave uh, on the relationship with the art of semantic web, that's when we were talking about these things. Um, so um, that that. Uh, so I, I anyway, you will see the articles related to uh, interview with Amit Singhal when they when Google introduce or you know soon after they introduce semantic search uh, and knowledge graph, and then there is some articles on knowledge graphs, and then there were some articles already in the uh, fifteen year uh, the blog post on the fifteen year thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then there is uh, there are also some articles on Google Vault, uh, whereby the idea is that they were in in, in line with the principle of doing everything automated. They kind of moved from starting with freebase that is manually created all the way to uh, highly mm -hmm. automated solutions for keep, keeping with large noise graph. Uh, there are a number of uh, you know, efforts uh, in the world. Uh, for example, NELL, I showed you NEL, right? I think uh, the keynote that um, uh, the, uh, uh, Tom, Tom Mitchell gave at uh, ITP Big Data, where I also gave the you know, keynote on smart data. He gave the keynote on NEL never ending learning uh, language learning um, and so the idea is to they go through the web pages and try to extract what we call triple but try to extract the facts basically and continue to get new facts and you know again uh, use the strategies like if i can learn the same fact from multiple sources then i like multiple people voting for it that means i will have higher confidence that that's actually a fact and not just some hearsay let's say so you can keep continue to build um, uh, those kind of uh, techniques. Uh, uh, it so happened that um, um, last week, uh, the last class that I missed, I was uh, at uh, CMU. Uh, there was this uh, uh, meeting that Bosch had uh, uh, organized on uh, uh, connected manufacturing and other things like that. And uh, uh, I, I think that was also held in Gates Building. Um, uh, and then and, and we talked about. Uh, in the you know the CMU is one of the probably the first one of the earliest place to have a department dedicated to machine learning. But anyway, so Tom is a, I think uh, Tom is the department chair of machine learning, and the machine learning CMU has produced uh, you know is known to have produced a lot of engineers, which is very very important. Um, it's so interesting that in noise is now practically everybody also uses machine learning. 
the only thing is that um, we try to do it a little differently. Um, okay. Uh, that's all I have to say. Are we done? Yeah. Uh, so there are a couple of papers about uh, scheme of uh, that were published in uh, I think ISWC 2013 and 2014. I will also uh, post the links to uh, those papers. If you are interested in, you can go read them. Uh, the first paper talks about uh, the usage of uh, schema vocabulary. Uh, so remember, schema was uh, first published in uh, or oh, introduced in 2011, June, uh, uh, June July uh, time frame, and uh, the paper came out in uh, 2013, and they were looking at uh, the web corpus uh, from 2012 come up with the statistics uh, that are reported in that paper and you you would be surprised to uh, see uh, at least within the few months from uh, 2011 June July to 2012 uh, uh, the widespread use of schema so now uh, people say at least 10 percent of the web, uh, web pages uh, has schema And the second paper was about uh, converting schema into RPA triple. So that is a technical paper. Uh, but the first one is uh, really interesting. It gives you the stats about uh, usage of schema, not only schema, uh, several other uh, uh, you know annotation uh, vocabularies. For an example, open graph from Facebook. There were uh, other annotation uh, libraries like PC, dubbing co library, uh, friend of a friend. So, how many people are using FOF, uh, how many people are using DC, so things like that. So. Is there something known about reasoning on the schema or is that possible? Uh, with 2014 ISWC paper, where they talk about converting schema into triples, I think you can do schema. Okay, because there is no schema behind uh, schema at all. In the schema, that's right. There yes. is a vocabulary, there is no subtitles or. Oh. Yeah. Okay. There is a question. You know? Yeah, I, I, I think if you read that paper, yeah, you, sure. you, you'll be able to figure out. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, schema has a very shallow schema. I mean, they have certain data types. If you scroll down the uh, schema class list, then yeah, this the bottom of the page. They present it uh, as a hierarchy, but I cannot really look for. A, if I curl the entity in, like on terminal, I cannot go like through the hierarchy. So uh, basically, it I think is more like a taxonomy than an ontology. Yeah, yeah. So it has is a schema less in terms of. Uh, yeah, because the idea, language. Yeah, idea is coming from uh, librarians who, who try to catalog, you know, uh, things yeah. into right, right. Yeah. categories. So yeah, could be one one reason. Yeah. I'll also post the two papers here. Yeah. Do you think there is um? Like since you are working more than us in the schema, do you think it's more, it's it's better to have a, a well-defined communication channels to actually like communicate what is happening in schema the talker in terms of changing the naming and all of these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's already one. Uh, there's uh, there's a, a W3C mailing list, so anyone can subscribe. I know, but I mean not a well defined. I mean, like for example, we can have like some validator that actually can check a, 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 an HTML and then tell you that okay, these have been changed. Oh, okay. Or if they tell the yeah, story. so maybe we can actually have like a tracker of what is happening, and then it can give me suggestions. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Please That's do a this. Good point. Uh, be cool. That might be a, a project for this class. I mean, I guess it would be a project for uh, like one of the stars, uh, not all the stars on GitHub, but if you want to. Oh yeah, if you, if you look at GitHub, but, but it's still manual. 
like when uh, I have seen when um, like recently Dr. Shit shared with me a post from Aaron uh, Bradley. So he mm. he's, he's also very he's uh, big, active. Big time SEO yeah. guy. Yeah. So yeah, he was talking about uh, not him. Uh, someone was talking about adding um, QR codes to image object. So there's a, a image object mm-hmm. class in this vocabulary. Uh, so the guy has requested to add QR code property into that. So yeah. So that happens in GitHub now mm-hmm. because they moved everything to GitHub. So, but again, uh, yeah, it is manual still. Like you yeah. won't know unless you go and check. Exactly. So. But I think the problem will come when uh, those people like do major revisions, right? Because we'll be comparing. Hmm. So. When say, you you really don't know whether yeah, what they whether a search engine supports the uh, tags you have on your web page or not un- uh, until you go and check it, right? I know that's why I mean I guess um, if if I want my data to be available, mm-hmm. I mean I have to comply whatever they are yeah, actually yeah. giving. So I have to keep track of what they are doing. But we need to optimize this thing, not because it's now from what I see now, it's a headache. Yeah, yes, that's true. Even uh, I, I realize that it does not show some of the annotations on my web pages before the class because <laughs> I was using RDFA, uh, so I wanted you all to use RDFA because it's a standard. So yeah. that's why I, I selected RDFA over my trade. <laughs> but then uh, with this new uh, with snippet annotation tool, uh, somehow uh, they do not do not show the RDFA annotations properly. Yeah. I mean, it used to show properly with the earlier version of the tool, but not not anymore. So well, usually in the life, anything that is easier to use <laughs> wins out, even if you end up paying more in the long run. It's, it's like the follow, you know, it's like um, web search. If you spend just a little more time, more precisely giving the query, search query, you probably get a lot better answers. But uh, the temptation of typing in that one word or two word, without any further, you know, quotes or whatever else you could do plus or thing, uh, uh, is just too much. Um, I go back to a lesson learned long time ago. Uh, again, when I had search engine company, right, the Tali company, and there was Alta Vista and uh, Excite. Alta Vista had um, very uh, significant um, uh, advanced search option um, and uh, so we can do all the you know boolean operators and negation and what I mean, number of other things uh, count and other things like that but that would require people to understand IR concepts information concepts really right and very few people used it very very few people used it Google never advertised you know, took up the responsibility more for the search engine, even if you can't do a greater job, because users, users are very lazy, they are just not going to do the job. The same thing here, um, if you think about it, uh, who does metadata uh, annotation? Who does schema dot? Webmasters. Webmasters, and uh, they work for somebody, right? So, Pawan does that, you know, for our website. I am really the customer, I really want to have a perfect thing, but he just needs to tell me that he has done it. He doesn't have to do a perfect job, he's just, you know, so he's going to take an easy job. Right, Paul? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> 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 Hypothetically, let's But, but you, know, you see, uh, the incentive, you know, I mean, that's a job, there's, something, there's a job for somebody, but does he, if somebody owns, is a small business, he owns that business, he is, you know, go, you know, he's convinced that the traffic will go up because of his uh, better quality of rotation, he will spend whatever time is necessary. But, you know, your employee may or may not have the right motivation to do that because the um, end customer, the owner or whosoever, may, does not even have technical knowledge. Okay. I'm a website owner, I understand schema at all, I take my, tell my employee, do it, but I don't have necessarily capacity that has it done, done it the best way possible. And he doesn't have need to, he, he, he probably he's a techie guy, IT guy, who doesn't want to understand the business, which I understand. Right? Now if, you know, um, 
Sanjay knows that he has this paper and if he tags it very well, he will improve the citation. He will do all the things in his paper, right? But I shared with the group. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay.